do you ever pay attention to the inside cover of a video game case? I know we aren't supposed to judge a book by its cover, but last I checked, this isn't a book. I have picked out games entirely because the front cover art looked interesting. First impressions can be invaluable, especially when it comes to selling a product, but second impressions can be just as important. One of the strangest disappointments about modern gaming is opening up a brand new video game to see just a slew of legal text, and that's if you're lucky it isn't just a blank white void. Traditionally, there used to be game manuals in the case to fill any bareness of the inner cover, but with that practice now done away with, publishers have the chance to be creative with what they can display there. This has led to games now having print on the opposite side of the box art. Sometimes there may be a character roster of who all is in the game, like what Super Smash Bros. Ultimate does, or more commonly though, there will be some sort of simple control guide, a lot of Nintendo Switch games do this, for example, but those to some extent have utility, so some publishers ask themselves, what if we just put something there to be fun? What if the inside cover could be just as interesting, if not more interesting, than the outside cover? Alright, so I want to talk about the creative opportunity to do more with the inside cover, rather than just leaving it blank. Not every game does something with the inside of the video game case, because why would everyone? It arguably can cost more to print paper with high quality art on both sides, and that is just also something else that needs to get done in the design process. And so games on the lower end of things tend to be the ones who just opt out and go towards the blank white spaces. That doesn't mean that every cheap game out there will be like this, but I have noticed a trend. So what about games that do decide to get creative? Well, there is typically two routes that you can take if you're not going to put game information there. Those being an art spread across the entire inner cover, or what I specifically want to focus on, an alternative cover for the game. Alternative cover art or a reversible game cover is a simple concept. You were already having to print off a cover sleeve for the case, so just print something else on the other side of that slip of paper and boom! You've given players the chance to take a game cover out, flip it around, and have an entirely new look to the game case. Now, technically every game case can have the art sleeve reversed to give it a new look. I, I didn't say it would look good. Uh, just that it could be done. In a weird way, reversible game art can make a case feel more premium and or special. This is also a much more cost-effective and accessible way to make your game stand out on a shelf, opposed to some other methods that publishers can use. I would say traditionally, if a game publisher wanted to have a special or premium copy of their game, they would go the route of a steelbook. These are an alternative to the standard CD or Blu-ray cases that video games typically use, and instead, these steelbooks are going to be made out of metal. The benefit of a steelbook is that it typically looks better overall than a standard case, and if you own any media in a steelbook, typically the value of that said media will depreciate less or even increase in value over time just due to the nature of steelbooks and how they are released and treated. A lot of special editions or limited releases go for the steelbook method, and I will admit, I have fallen for this release tactic recently with the Super Mario Bros. movie. I picked up the power-up edition that came with an admittedly underwhelming collector's steelbook. The weirdest part is that I paid more for this release, and I don't even like steelbooks. While the quality is most certainly there, I do not like how different steelbooks can look in a collection. For example, I recently picked up the collector's box for Nino Kuni 2 on PS4. The collector's edition comes with the standard Blu-ray case for the game, like all other PS4 games, as well as a steelbook case. Now, I keep the cases bundled inside the box that it came with, but if I were to mix Nino Kuni 2 in with my other PS4 games, I would much rather have the standard case as opposed to the steelbook. That's just personal preference, and there are plenty of collectors out there that do enjoy steelbooks, and you know what? More power to you if that's the case. All that to say though, I feel similarly about reversible game covers. Most of the time the artwork is insanely good and debatably better than the default box art, but the spine, it sticks out the same way steelbooks do. This is ultimately boiled down to personal preferences once again, and to each individual it's going to be different, but for me, the difference in the spine art bothers me to no end. I can totally see the appeal in having a unique difference standing out and adding variety to a library, but 
I think I'm just far enough on the OCD spectrum to where this bothers me. I love consistency in my video game collections. The Nintendo Switch, for example, is one of my favorite libraries just from how the spines are being designed. They all line up so beautifully, it's perfect. When I first got my Switch, like everyone else who picked up one in the release year, I wanted games to play, but the options were pretty far and few in those early days. Uh, one option was Super Bomberman R, and a lot of people picked up the game because of this. Me, however, I absolutely refused, no matter how desperate I got for wanting a new game for my Switch. I never bought Super Bomberman R. The reason is quite simple. The spine art did not match the rest of the Nintendo Switch's library. This should be considered a war crime. The spine is nothing like the other games. It looks awful in game collections, and they did later go and redo the case to be more in line with Nintendo Switch games, but by then, it was far, far too late for me to be interested in this game anymore, so to this day, Super Bomberman R eludes me. If Super Bomberman R didn't stand a chance, then what hopes did Sonic Superstars ever have? I absolutely love this alternative cover art. It is leagues better than the generic 3D renders of the default art, and I will even admit the spine has much more character and charm to it, but next to all the other Switch games, this just can't do for me. I want the option to choose between which cover art I can have without causing a disturbance in the collection. If only, if only there was a game publisher that understood this struggle. A publisher just brave enough to give players the option of an alternative reversible box art without changing the way the spine design looked. But with all this dramatic buildup and blatant giveaway that I know such a game, I don't think any publisher is up to the task. I'll just have to admit defeat that I'll never have the option to display reversible game covers because my pickiness just knows no ends. Except wait, I, I think I know a game. One that not only keeps the spine art similar to the smallest details, but also allows for alternative cover art. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to be the one that presents to you the perfect example of what reversible game covers should be in accordance to my very particular nitpicks, Final Fantasy XVI. Not only is there an alternative design for the cover image that I personally think is much better than the original, but the spine is the same on both covers. And the back is practically the same too, except there's just no barcode or ESRB rating box. It's simply perfect. Other games have done this for the reversible covers, I just for some reason didn't notice until I got Final Fantasy 16. So then I started to think though, what other games do I have in my collection that have reversible game covers? But first I need to establish something that is commonly misinterpreted. Just because a game has a beautiful art spread on the inner cover does not mean it has a reversible cover. For example, I have seen many posts and articles stating that Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition has one of the best alternative covers, but I hate to break it to you, this is not a reversible cover. It's at least not what I would consider to be. While the art is great and it does state the title of the game, there is no spine label. And that to me is what disqualifies it from being reversible cover art. If you put it on a shelf and you're trying to sort out your games, you wouldn't know that that was the case for Horizon Zero Dawn unless you pulled it off the shelf and looked at the front. I have also seen posts claiming that Animal Crossing New Horizons, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and even Nintendo Switch Sports have some of the best reversible covers in the Switch's library, and just Really, in good faith, you're going to claim that this is a great alternative cover? But ultimately, none of these games fall into what I would define a reversible game case cover to be. It's just artwork to be displayed inside the case when you open it up. I just mentioned Breath of the Wild, but another game that people like to claim has alternative box art cover is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I would have loved if Nintendo decided to put the original golden cover from the Wii game as the alternative in the Switch's case, but unfortunately that's not what's happened. And while there is artwork on the inside, once again there's no spine title and so this is not something I would consider to be reversible artwork. Now if you like to flip around the slipcover and have the inner art on the outside of the game case, by all means, don't let me near your game collection because I will swap it back.
While I was going through my personal library of games, I was curious when reversible covers first started to pop up, and while I could not track down the first game to ever do this trend, I would say it is safe to assume it was not until CD cases were the norm that this started, and if it wasn't obvious enough, I don't think you're going to have the alternative box arts with a, well, a literal box. You know, unless you want to try and fold your game box inside out like a sock. Don't worry, Jack Nicholas. I would never hurt you. Now you duck hunt. The earliest games that I could really find that did this were Wii games, most notably the new play control games on the Wii. These were ported GameCube games with added motion controls made specifically for the Wii, and the original box arts are, well, quite frankly pretty awful, but you could reverse the cover sleeve and get a much more standard box art. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles for the Wii also had a really great alternative cover that you could swap around to. Problem is, I'm sure there are tons of people out there who never knew that this was an option. And that's simply because Wii game cases are opaque, you can't see them, so if there was art on the other side of the cover, you would have never known, unless you checked out of sheer curiosity or by accident that you found these covers. I also happened to find a few 3DS games with reversible covers as well, like the Japanese version of New Super Mario Bros. 2, and The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. Unfortunately for my case, I own the Nintendo Selects version of that game, and it did not carry over the reversible aspect in the re-release. But the same deal with 3DS games as the Wii, you would have never known that these had reversible covers because the cases are solid. Also, no one really ever talked about this. I didn't know until just recently that my copy of A Link Between Worlds didn't have a reversible cover because I never knew the original release of the game had a reversible cover. And so that's why I think it was not until the 7th and 8th console generations when the game cases were transparent that we started to get these more known and more frequent occurrences of these game slip arts being reversible. Since I spent admittedly too long going through and flipping around all of my reversible game covers, I just want to take a moment to go through and share the ones that I have and any opinions on them. The first game that I found that really stuck out to me for having a different cover art was Doom 2016. The default art is pretty iconic and simple, but the reversed cover sleeve art is really good and much more in line with the game, as well as feeling like a nod to the original game's artwork. Similar to 16, Final Fantasy XV has reversible cover art as well, this time with an old school vibe to it. I really like the basic logo with the plain black background, but unfortunately this does not have the same treatment that 16 would have, and the spine is just the title on it. Both Spider-Man games for PS4 have reversible covers, and the original game from 2018 has Spider-Man's logo on one side and amazing artwork of Spider-Man on the other. Best part of this too is that the spine is the same for whichever cover you pick. Sadly, the follow-up game Miles Morales does not get the same treatment. Great artwork on both sides, but the spine is missing the PS4 ribbon. And while I do enjoy and appreciate the different artwork that these games give for the alternative covers, I weirdly prefer the standard box arts. Something about the consistency and the simple renders of the characters through the series is worth appreciating. Minecraft for PS4 has a reversible cover, making it the only physical copy of Minecraft to have one. Not even the same version of Minecraft, but just on the Xbox One, gets a reversible cover art. Moving into my Switch library, we mostly just have the Sonic games, but before I talk about those, I do want to mention the collection of Mana, which has one of the best reversible covers in my opinion. Both sides of the sleeve contain amazing box arts that just look fabulous, but I had to go with the side featuring the, all of the main characters from the three games reaching up at the Mana Seed. The back cover on the side is also really cool with the retro art, and it has the standard Nintendo Switch spine design which is something Sonic cannot say. I've already touched on Superstars, which has really great custom art, and the same can be said for Sonic Origins. I love how they designed the case to resemble a Genesis game case with all the little references littered across the artwork. But yeah, that's pretty much the extent of the reversible covers. For some reason, most games with reversible cover arts tend to be in the PlayStation 4 catalog, and I don't exactly know why that is, if it's the demographic of who buys PlayStation 4 games, or if it's just that PlayStation 4 does something different that like Xbox and Nintendo Switch don't do as much. I don't know. Like I've stated, all of this boils down to your preference, if you like having an alternative art to switch to, or if you don't. From what I've seen, 
I'm in the minority, and most people love to flip their game art immediately as soon as they find out that it can be. But regardless of if you like having different box art or the original, there is something we can all take away from this conversation, and that is to always judge a book by its cover, especially when you can change that cover to something that's more favorable.